I know that few of you are still joining. I want to welcome all of you for the Community Foundation of Shreveport. And we're going to be focusing on measuring success, a new outcome management framework. And this is um, very exciting. I'm going to give you just a little bit of background on me and, and here and why you're participating in this webinar. So my name is Deborah Nathan Schoen. I run a nonprofit organization called the Center for What Works based in Chicago, Illinois. And our, our real goal is, is to get nonprofits and funding organizations on the same page when it comes to outcome measurement, how to measure, manage, articulate, and ideally raise more funds for the results that you're trying to achieve through your programs. So I've been um, hired to do this webinar by the Community Foundation as a way for them to offer you some training on how to identify what your key outcomes and indicators are so that you can add them to your grant application and have a, just a more, a more solid and fluid method of providing information to them, both for the application and then to report on what's happening well you know, in midterm and final reporting processes. So as they monitor how you're doing, you'll be identifying a set of indicators um, at the application phase that allow you to monitor those same indicators along the way throughout your grant cycle. Um, and to the question about lowering hands, yes. If you, if you want to go ahead and lower your hands now, that's great. Thank you, everyone. OK, moving forward here. Now, for those of you, just real quickly, that are not using the chat, um, you may want to minimize, not close, but you may want to minimize your control panel so that you can see the full screen here. So again, at the Center for What Works, our real goal is quantifying success to meet your mission. And what that really means is many of you have amazing organizations with really motivating and sometimes lofty sounding missions. And that's, that's all a very good thing, and there's there's wrong with that. But what we're trying to get at here is how do we quantify the fact that we are actually moving positively toward our mission, that we're getting there, that we're achieving the type of results that we set out to do. And the Center for What Works is here to help you do that. So we, we improve social sector results through benchmarking. And benchmarking is a process of performance measurement that we're going to be taking you through on this hour and a half webinar today. So again, our goal is to connect nonprofits and funders through a common language. Um, that's a good thing for everyone. It allows the whole grant application and monitoring process to become much more streamlined. Um, now, the, the frameworks that I'm going to show you throughout today's webinar in creating this common language is a series of work that we have done and research that we've done jointly and in partnership with the Urban Institute based in Washington, DC. So we, we continue to work with the Urban Institute. We've been partnered with them since 2004. And then our role, in addition to the research at the Center for Fort Works, is to take that rigorous research and serve as a bridge to practical tools and services. So building the measurement capacity organizations to do this well. Now this is a gentleman that many of us may recognize, um, Albert Einstein. And um, Einstein said several things about measurement. So I just want to kind of frame our presentation. Um, a very famous thing that he said was actually a sign posted outside of his office door that said, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything can be counted counts. Um, so that is to say that we really want to identify the right metrics. But the way that I want to frame this presentation even more is to say that everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. So the Center for What Works has been in business um, for 15 years. We've been um, reading and researching 
and identifying the most cutting edge and leading research out there for that entire time, and we continue to do so, around outcome measurement and getting at performance and results. And we realize through all of our research that these are really complex concepts. Uh, doing a solid evaluation can be lengthy and resource intensive. So we don't want to oversimplify all of this, but we do want to make it as simple as possible. So hopefully you'll be happy to know that the information we're going to provide you with today should make your life, um, when it comes to applying for funding at least, and, and tracking your success with the Community Foundation, much, much simpler. So this is another um, um, quote that I, I thought was really powerful. And this is not to share any political viewpoint, but just to, just to share with you that on Bill Clinton's foundation website, under what we do, there's a very quick quote that is really solid for both foundations and you as nonprofit providers to really think about, which is the success of our work is measured by a single question. Are people better off now than when we started? And that's something that hopefully all of you ask yourselves at least a few times a year. Um, you know, maybe some of you lose sleep over it as well. But however you approach your work, um, those of us in the nonprofit sector are really busy trying to improve, trying to improve the lives of the people that we serve, and we want to make sure that we're actually accomplishing that. So to to be able to get at this question and reflect on it and have a solid process for knowing whether people are better off now than when we started is really what we're going to be doing today. One last idea of framing that I want to share with you is that um, you know, why do we do performance measurement in order to get at our results? So Harry Hatchery is a senior director at the Urban Institute, again, in Washington, DC. He wrote a seminal book back in the late 90s called Performance Measurement, Getting Results. And he said that regular measurement of progress towards specified outcomes is a vital component, a vital component of any effort at managing for results. So what, what he was getting at here is really to say that all of us, whether we are the community foundation in our, you know, in our area or whether we're a nonprofit organization providing services to the people in our community. All of us have success stories, right? We all have a picture in our minds or maybe in our annual reports or on our websites, in brochures. We all have a picture of, you know, happy people, um, healthy animals, you know, a beautiful environment, a solid um, performing arts program, etc. We all have those anecdotal success stories to show that we are doing wonderful things within our community. What performance measurement does is it helps us not move beyond, you know, not set aside that story, but enhance that story and that anecdote by saying, you know what, we're going to share with you this story, but then we're also going to share with you data to show that we didn't only accomplish this for one person, you know, or one family, or one situation, but we actually do this systematically. And that's just really powerful. That is powerful stuff. And that's what the Community Foundation wants you to be able to do. So today's objectives are threefold. Again, I gave a little bit of background, and I'll go into a little bit more here. So the Community Foundation wants to help the local nonprofit community to use what works, common outcome frameworks, to articulate desired program results, and then to create a process to manage the data to establish what works. So that's really the goal. Um, beyond that, once the new website and process for the Community Foundation is running, it will actually become um, either strongly recommended or perhaps even a requirement that you applying for funding from the Community Foundation use the outcomes and indicators within our framework to be able to start to articulate your results. So again, today's webinar and whenever you view this as a recording, the webinar is going to do three things. We're going to show you ways to connect your mission 
with the results that you hope to achieve through a shared understanding of outcomes. So many of you are already um, pretty well versed in outcome measurement. I know that it's not new to many of you. Um, so what we'll do at the beginning of the, the webinar here is offer a refresher and also make sure that everyone is on the same page as far as the definitions that I'm going to give for um, outcomes and especially as outcomes are differentiated from impact. Secondly here, I'm going to introduce you to an outcome measurement framework that you can think about for your programs moving forward. And then lastly, I'll prepare you to identify the outcomes and indicators that are most relevant to your work through our What Works Outcomes portal, because that online and free resource is what you're going to be using as you fill out your grant application coming forward here. All right, so let's talk about creating this common language. Many of you are familiar with something that looks like this. This is a program logic model. And this is a program logic model in its most basic format that has been um, promoted and, um, and really you know, very well, I guess, marketed by United Way of America and local United Ways for about 15 years. And it's supposed to be a way to think about planning your program that will ultimately achieve the impact that you hope to achieve. Now, I'm, I'm going to um, not spend too much time walking through this. I'm literally just going to spend a few minutes um, here as a refresher, whereas United Way and, and other consultants might spend you know, upwards of you know, four hours to four days walking through this. Um, I'm really just going to briefly walk through it. And then I encourage you to um, email me or enter in the chat box any questions that you might have. So the logic model goes something like this in its most traditional format. You have a certain set of inputs. So if all of you could think about your organizations and the fact that you currently have a certain number of human resources or staff that work for your organization, you have a certain annual budget and revenues that are expected to, to positively you know, affect and hit your organization. Perhaps you own a building. Perhaps you have um, trucks, delivery trucks. Um, perhaps you own class space, et cetera. Those are all your inputs. And from that, this, these arrows between the boxes are supposed to um, mark the logical flow from one box to the next. From those inputs, you do a certain number of things, right? So perhaps you put on arts programming. Perhaps you run a tutoring program. Perhaps you offer workforce development classes. Um, perhaps you offer education, educational programs about various things. Perhaps you clean up the local river. Right? So there are all sorts of different activities that you do on a daily basis with the resources that you have. So we're still, we're still logical right, at this point. Now from that is output. Right? So how many people did you serve? How many acres of land did you clean up? How many performing arts programs were actually performed? How many um, prescriptions or health remedies were distributed? Okay? These are the outputs, and they are the exact um, numbers, countable numbers, of things that resulted from your activities. Outcomes I have here in blue as a differentiator to say outcomes do not exactly flow logically. So this is where I'm going to disagree a little bit with the traditional model. Because outcomes are the point in the logic model that should cause pause and should cause you to say, oops, so what? You know? So we had $100,000 and two full-time staff, and we did a bunch of activities. You know, we ran a bunch of classes, and you know, 50 people showed up. That all sounds like a good thing, but so what? How did we change those 50 people's lives? Did they learn anything new? 
right? Did they increase their knowledge? Do they have a new skill? Has their behavior changed in a positive way? Um, have we, you know, perhaps have we gone as far as improving their quality of life? Okay, these are outcomes, these are the results of your programs that allow you to answer that question, so what? You know, was it worthwhile for us to run this program? This is where we're going to spend the rest of our time today. Now, in order to run an efficient outcome measurement or management process at your organization, you not only need to identify the key outcomes that are attributable to your programs, but you also need to associate indicators, measures, or metrics. These are all the same thing. Different researchers use different words. I'll use indicators. You need to associate the appropriate indicators to know that you are quantifiably achieving the outcomes that you are, um, that you are trying to achieve. Okay? Now, from that, you should be able to, I have a grayed out arrow here, that you should be able to know whether you're getting at, whether you can approximate toward the impact that you hope to achieve. Now, impact, I have really grayed out here to show that um, impact is pretty elusive. I'm going to equate impact with either your mission or your vision statement. So it's often something that is important, there's no question, important to your organization, important to your program, but it's a little bit elusive from the standpoint that we can't necessarily measure it directly, right? So if, if our impact goal, for example, is to eradicate poverty for a certain population within our community, we can certainly identify what key outcomes might get us toward that goal of eradicating poverty. But if 10 years from now, poverty is indeed um, no longer right in our community, we will not be able to necessarily claim full responsibility or credit for that happening, right? Because the impact is something bigger than one organization. Community-wide impact is something that the community foundation might be aiming toward through all of their different strategies. But one nonprofit organization cannot really claim um, impact with any set of credibility unless, unless you're an outlier, if you will, organization that is funded to do research and longitudinal studies with control groups that allow you to look back, let's say five to 10 years down the road, at the progress that you made. And there are some organizations, um, I don't know if there are any in, in Louisiana or in Shreveport specifically, but there are definitely organizations that have been funded to do this over time, over the long haul in our country, you know, namely, you know, the Nurse Family Partnership is, is always called out as one. Now, they've been doing impact studies and research with huge dollars to do so for about 30 years, okay? But it is not the common, um, it is not a common practice that we're going to be able to report out on impact. So I will go no further with this logic model other than to say, we really want to be focused on the outcomes piece of it. Okay, now I'm going to differentiate a little bit here between planning, which was this logic model, and evaluation. So evaluation um, really does have a focus on outcomes, but traditionally evaluation is something that focuses on the so what, right? Why did we exist as a program? It focuses on that in retrospect. So at one point in time. So I'll use the example that perhaps some of you have received funding for a three-year grant cycle, either from the community foundation or another funder or a donor. And after that three-year grant cycle, they say to you, you know, we understand that you might want to continue this program, but before you continue it, we want to know that you achieved what you said that you were going to achieve. So we need you to do this evaluation for the last three years and prove to us that you achieved your goals. Now, as you can imagine, um, that may be useful to the person that's making the funding request, but it is often 
unfortunately not a learning process for the organization and can serve as much more of a compliance requirement. So what we want to make sure, you can also imagine, by the way, that in order to do that for the last, let's say, three years, if you don't have processes and data in place that you've been collecting over that course of three years, you're going to be in a situation where you have you know, an awful lot of hoops to jump through and perhaps even you know, file folders and, and you know, God forbid, garbage bags of receipts and data points and sign-up sheets and attendees. Um, lists and checklists of different kinds to figure out the answer to that question. So for this process, we're not going to be focused on evaluation. We're going to be focused much more closely on performance measurement or benchmarking as an ongoing process, again, with a focus on the outcome stage of the logic model. Now I want to go through um, one last definition on outcomes, and then we're going to leave this whole topic um, and move forward. So according to United Way of America, there are three levels of outcomes that can be achieved. At an early stage or an initial stage outcome, we're looking at new knowledge, improved skills, or a change in attitude. So if all of you take a step back as I'm talking and think about one of your programs and try to imagine whether you are accomplishing these types of things. And if not, how could you imagine you know, doing that? How could you imagine accomplishing these types of outcomes? Now, deeper from that, we have modified behavior. So not only did someone learn something new or improve a skill that they already had, or perhaps they have you know, this fresh new attitude or outlook you know, based on the work that you've done with them, but have they then gone deeper to an intermediate stage outcome and actually modified their behavior? So that's where things start to get pretty powerful. Now, United Way described yet a deeper level of improved condition or altered status. And what I will say about this is this is really entering that gray area toward impact. Because improved condition, we can imagine an improved, perhaps, economic condition of someone's life if we're working in workforce development. Perhaps we can imagine an improved health condition if our nonprofit is focused on health services or, or the health sciences. But at the end of the day, there are so many other factors that take place and impact um, and our inputs into an individual human being's life, that this becomes very, very hard to attribute directly back to our organization. So we're going to focus more in this top area. Now, how are we going to do that? This is where I introduce a new model. Um, before I do so, I'm just going to go to my attendee list here. And um, I just clicked to lower everyone's hands. And for those of you viewing the recording of this later, you won't be able to do this. But folks, before I move any further, I want to see a show of hands on whether you're with me so far. Is this making pretty good sense? Show me. Um, raise your hand if, if everything is OK so far. And if you don't raise your hand, what I'd like you to do is start to use the chat box and let me know you know, what questions are beginning to, to come out for you. OK, it looks like a, a really good number of you have raised your hand. That's great. OK, I'm going to lower everyone's hand here. Now, I, I'm just seeing a note from someone that the transmission is not um, consistent. And I, I'm just wondering, Frida, that was you that wrote that. I, is it verbal or the visual transmission, if you could let me know? The verbal transmission, OK. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I can do about that, other than to say I, I hope it isn't too distracting. Thank you for that notice. OK, let me move on from here. Now, this is the model that we're going to be working with for the rest of today's session. 
and to some extent that you'll be working with in your um, that you'll be working with in your next round of applications to the Community Foundation. So this is the last piece that I'll show for this common language, and then we're going to jump into the outcome measurement framework, of which this is a part. This is a, a solid piece of that. So what we want to do in performance measurement or benchmarking is put aside the logic model if you can and think about this as an outcomes model because this is really where we want to start. So we're going to take this huge arrow here. We're going to take this great leap forward to impact or mission. And for purposes of filling out your application, you can think of this as either your organization as a whole or for those of you that are applying for funding for one specific program, you'll want to change your mindset now to focusing really on that one program. And what is the impact or the mission of that program right? that you're running? What is the big goal, that huge goal that you're trying to achieve? And from there, because that will not be directly measurable, right? I gave the example before of eradicating poverty. Um, improving you know, quality of life for an entire community. Things like that that are a little bit too big to be directly measurable. We want to identify that big goal and then move backwards and say, OK, in order to achieve that huge goal, what outcomes can we accomplish? What outcomes can we legitimately accomplish to show the so what? of our program, right? To show improved knowledge, skills, behavior, um, modified, um, modified action, et cetera. And once we identify those key outcomes, we're going to quantifiably associate indicators to know whether we're getting there or not. And this whole process is not something that happens at one point in time. It's a process that happens over time and from that process and the resulting data, it serves as a wonderful approximation for whether we have actually achieved our impact. So I'm going to go into a lot more detail on this, but this is really that main framework that we're going to be working with. OK, so let's talk about um, this in more detail now, this outcome measurement framework. The key questions to consider as you're um, before we identify our key outcomes are really threefold. Who do we need to impact to succeed? Right? So who is our target beneficiary of services? And for some of us, that's really straightforward. So if we run a educational type program or a youth tutoring or a youth mentoring program, right, it's the people that come to our classes. So whether it's you know, early childhood, you know, youth, young adults, adults, et cetera, those tend to be our key clients or the key people that we need to impact to succeed. Now, if we run an environmental program or um, an arts and culture program you know, where we may have really diversified audience, this is going to be a much harder question to answer. But you want to be able to really consider who your target beneficiary group is first. Okay. Then you need to think about, OK, for those people, what do we want to achieve? At the end of the day, right? life is short. At the end of the day, what would success look like? And this is the third question. What do we want to know that we accomplished for our target beneficiaries at the end of the day? And this leads us to being able to know what to measure. So we have here what to measure and where to begin. Now, this is where I start to um, not completely throw away the logic model, but turn it on its side a little bit. So I want to approach it a little bit differently. Now, traditional management, both in the nonprofit sector and the business sector and the public sector, frankly, tends to look at internal processes often as the driver. So they look at finances and budget. Right, or they look at staff and management effectiveness, and the model looks something like, OK, we have $100,000 in our annual budget. Great. Let's set the budget and figure out how we're going to spend that $100,000. Of course, 
taking into account the fact that we'd like to have some level of reserve at the end of the year. And programs and services and products and everything else flows from the chief financial officer or the accountant or you know whoever's running the books. Okay? This is a traditional management style that we are actually going to try to get away from, at least in terms of outcome measurement. Okay? Today's management, and the one that I'd like you to consider focusing on, is where program results are the driver. And forgive the, the terrible pun here that I actually have power and driver. But we're, what we're talking about is articulating our success, and UVP is our unique value proposition, right? Why do we, as an organization, uniquely exist to solve whatever social problem it is that we're trying to get at, okay? So how do we look at our level of success and the results that we're trying to achieve, and that being the starting point? or the amount of funds that we need to raise to get there. So it's kind of turning that traditional management style on its side, and it will, it will actually allow your organization to be much more efficient and effective at achieving your goals if you start with what success looks like. And then, of course, to, I have community engagement here to show that today's management style also is very openly open in its, in its acknowledgement of the fact that we don't exist in a vacuum. None of us do. We all exist within a community. And the services that we're providing cannot be the standalone only service to improve the lives of the people that we're targeting. Right? There are all sorts of things that are necessary, ranging from you know, arts and civic engagement, education, you know, a healthy environment, health services, you know, other human services, um, religious services, et cetera. So we want, to, we want to really make sure that we're aware not only of what success looks like to us in a vacuum, but what does success look like to us as part of this community. And from there, this is where outcomes come into play. So I'm going to spend some time at this point walking you through the, um, the What Works Outcomes Portal, which is a free resource on the Center for What Works website. And I want to walk you through how you're going to approach this. Um, and I'm, I'm going to identify a couple of examples. So I'm going to move out of the PowerPoint at this stage. So your screen may go blank just for a second. And I want to show you all how to navigate getting here. So Liz, if you could just make sure and let me know that you're now viewing the Center for What Works website. That would be great. So hopefully what all of you should be looking at right now is the Center for What Works website. So this is whatworks.org. And again, you will have these instructions, so you don't need to take serious notes. But for those of you that would like to even bring this up on your own screen, you could. So we're at whatworks.org. And the way to access the outcomes portal, which is where you're going to want to go, is pretty straightforward. Access our tools. And the first two tools are the outcomes portal. So, and there are other ways to get there through our website, but that's the most straightforward. Okay. Now we are in the What Works Outcomes Portal. And you can see that there are two tools here. And again, this is where you're going to need to go in order to identify the key outcomes and indicators for your organization for your next round of um, applications to the Community Foundation. So if you haven't been paying attention to this point, um, this is really a, a, a part two to kind of make sure you're, you're all here. So we have the Outcomes Framework Browser and the Impact Measurement Framework. And the place that we're going to want to start is the Outcomes Framework Browser. Now what this will show all of you is the fact that we have 14 different outcome frameworks. Okay, and I, I'm going to go through these one by one, not to show you the detail, but just to make sure you're aware of what exists there. So we have outcome frameworks specifically for adult education and family literacy, advocacy, affordable housing, assisted living, 
business assistance, community organizing, emergency shelter, employment training, which is the same as work for, workforce development, health risk reduction, performing arts, prisoner reentry, transitional shelter, youth mentoring, and youth tutoring. Now, for those of you that look at this list and your programs or your organization is represented here, you're feeling pretty excited. For those of you um, out of the almost 70 of you that are participating today and those of you in the future that are looking at this list and thinking, this, does, this is not relevant to me because my program isn't here, have no fear, okay? We also have identified different segments of a common outcomes taxonomy. So this is a, a taxonomy is a fancy word for a framework. Um, we've identified common outcomes frameworks that are more generalized that you can use if your program is not specifically represented. Okay, so that's um, that's really what what I'd like to to tell you at that point, and I'm going to walk you through the details. Now, each of these is a link. So let's say your, um, your program is in youth tutoring. So you click on youth tutoring, and you want to see what is this outcome framework. Okay, so this is just thinking a little bit as it loads. And what has loaded on your screen now is actually um, again, the, the, the research framework that we did with the Urban Institute, but with input from hundreds of nonprofit organizations. Now, this may be a little bit small on your screen, so when you're doing this, you know, you'll have it on your own computer screen. But what it's showing is a set of intermediate outcomes leading to end outcomes that can eventually help you get toward the impact that you're trying to achieve. Now, each of the outcomes, again, these are pretty small, each of the outcomes that are mentioned in one of these boxes also exists as a link here. So when you look at this, this set of outcomes for your youth tutoring program, and you say, OK, what are we trying to achieve? Well, we want to make sure that students are enrolled in our tutoring program. We want to make sure not only that they're enrolled, but they actually participate actively. Okay. Now we're getting toward more intermediate outcomes. We want to make sure that they demonstrate improved attitude and motivation towards school. Perhaps we want, perhaps a goal of ours, an outcome goal, is that we want to increase their study hours outside of school. Perhaps we want to go as far as saying, and these are more end, end level outcomes, we want to improve their school attendance. We want to improve overall their academic achievement through our tutoring program. And we want to make sure that they continue to advance educationally. Okay? Now, depending what's relevant for your tutoring program, you can identify and look at details for any of these. So let's, let's go to um, improving school attendance. And you say, you know what, that's something that we've really been striving for in our program. So I want to see how that works. Okay? So you've identified youth tutoring as your program area where the outcome that you're aiming toward, you want to see the result of improved school attendance. How in the world do you measure that? So there are, for this, for this specific outcome, two indicators that we've identified in our research that you can measure. The number and percent of students who showed a reduction in or absence of, you know, et cetera. So you can read this over the 12 months since entering the program, okay? So you can say, yeah, that's exactly what I want to measure. Okay, so you can see indicators here. Now, if you look at the indicator and you say, well, gosh, you know, that's important to me, but how in the world would I collect data? So you can see some, some ideas, some initial data collection strategies that we've identified. So they may be internal program records, perhaps. You collect this information systematically at your program. Perhaps you have a connection with the school district, and it shows absences on the report cards, and you have access to that information. Um, not as solid of a data collection strategy, but still possible, is to initially you know, survey, survey the youth that show up to your program and ask them as a, 
for a youth reported measure. Again, clearly it's, it's not as good as a, a formal record, but it is a possibility as you're starting to do this. Okay? So just some examples there. Now, you can see that um, for any program area and any outcome that you identify, it's going to show you the set of specific indicators tied to that. Okay, and without going any further, for those of you that are scratching your heads and saying, you know, we don't do youth tutoring, show us a different example. Let's get there. What I'd like to do now is show you the other, um, the other tool within the system. And let me just navigate. I'm going to navigate back through our website now to the Impact Framework tool. Now, this is where it gets much more specific for your program. So in the browser tool, that's where you can browse through all of the outcomes and indicators that we've identified. And again, for those of you that don't fall specifically into one of the 14 areas, you're going to want to spend some time looking at the various um, elements of the taxonomy. Okay. Now, when you're ready to do this, here's what you're going to start with the impact measurement framework. And this follows that model that I showed you, where you want to take that great leap forward and identify the mission or impact statement um, either of your organization as a whole, if you only run you know, one program, or of the specific program that you're trying to measure and you know, eventually receive funding for from the community foundation. So I, I'd like to move away from youth tutoring at this point and try to have this be relevant for more of you. And we're going to say that our impact that we're trying to achieve is enriching lives through art. Okay? And hopefully some of you are um, shaking your head and saying, yep, that's exactly what we want to do. Okay? Now this is an open field. So you can enter anything you want here, no right or wrong. It may be your organization's mission. It may be the specific, again, impact that you're trying to achieve through your program. But you'll want to articulate it here and then go to program selection. Okay. Now, we want to enrich lives through art. And why do we want to do that? Well, we run a performing arts program. Okay. So performing arts is one of the 14 areas. Again, those 14 areas are listed here along with the common outcomes taxonomy. We're going to choose performing arts and then go to step three. Okay. Now on step three, we say, okay, so we've, we've selected our program as performing arts. It's always going to show at the top of your screen. We've decided that our impact that we want to eventually get to is to enrich lives through art. Now, what can we measure, what results can we measure that will get us toward en enriching lives through art? So I look through this list and I say, what's really resonating with me as far as the results that I'm really trying to get at? And I say, you know what? Increasing awareness of our programs, you know, no, we already have connections with a lot of community partners to do this. This isn't one of our three key outcomes. And by the way, I should emphasize here that through the system, you're only allowed to select up to three outcomes. And the reason for that is not um, a technological reason. The reason is that according to our research and strategy around this, in order to make this meaningful, and allow for systematic data collection and monitoring and reporting and articulation of what's working. If you have more than three key outcomes, at least at the outset of developing this benchmarking process, um, you're going to be very overwhelmed when you get to data collection. So for purposes of this, and, and hopefully this is in line with you know, the new application coming out from the Community Foundation, you really only want to identify up to three. So um, keep yourself sane and try to identify, you know, two to three would be ideal. So we're going to say, you know, we really do need to increase access to a diverse audience. That's something we've been struggling with, but we, that is a key result that we want to achieve in our arts program. Secondly, we have to increase appreciation for the arts. 
Okay, so that's a key goal of ours. And then, you know, what else are we going to do? You know what, if our audiences aren't satisfied, they're not going to come back. And then we won't be able to accomplish anything, let alone enriching lives through art. So we want to make sure that our audience satisfaction is right on. Now, as I chose these three outcomes, what popped up on the right side are the specific indicators that tie to those outcomes. So let's walk through this in detail. And by the way, there's help on your screen when you do this on your own that will remind you of some of the things that I'm saying here. So this is just to orient you. So increased access to a diverse audience. How do I measure that, right? What are the quantifiable indicators to get there? And I see that, you know, through this framework, it looks like there are about five different ways I could measure this. Now you can, I believe through the system, you can choose as many as you want, but I'm going to strongly recommend that you don't choose more than three for the same reason that I mentioned under the outcomes. The last thing you want to do is burn out staff with data collection. What you really want to do through this process is have it serve as a possibility for prioritizing, right? Honing in on your core strengths and the core results that you're trying to get to. So as I read through these various indicators, I say, you know what? Um, I, I do absolutely want to know this. I want to be able to report on the number and percent of community by population type who report that they believe that the performing art that we are presenting is sensitive to their culture. Okay, that's a key priority of my, my program. Okay, the second thing as I read through this, I say, you know what, I want to somehow measure that access um, not only has to do with cultural diversity, but has to do with socioeconomic level. So I'm going to make sure that I'm measuring the number of free tickets that we provide over time to make sure that we are increasing access um, to, again, to a diverse audience. And then I read through these and I say, mm, some of these are relevant, some aren't. You know, I really want to know over time what number and percent of our community reports that our performances are too costly um, and that cost becomes a real barrier to them attending, which of course becomes a barrier to us being able to enrich their lives through, through art. Okay. Our second one, we're going to do the same thing. And as I read through increased appreciation for the arts, and I read these two indicators, I say, you know what, we actually want to measure both of these. And the screen will reload, so it just popped me up. And I say, I, I absolutely want to measure increased appreciation for the arts and um, what additional arts programs our audience may be pursuing. And then audience satisfaction, absolutely. It's a basic measure, and I want to get at that. Okay, so now I've chosen my key outcomes, I've chosen the relevant indicators, and now I want to generate an impact measurement framework. Ta-da! And what you have here is a one-page summary of what success looks like for that program. Now what you do with this, and I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint in just a moment, I'm going to show you one more example, but what you do with this is you go to your file bar and under page setup, and I, I have this here as an instruction, just to remind you, under page setup, you'll choose landscape, right, and then press OK, and then you'll go to file print. And what that will pop out of your printer is one page, right? one page that says, this is how we articulate success. This is the impact that we entered at the beginning on the first screen, enriching lives through art. These are the three key results that we're trying to achieve to get us toward that key outcome. And as I scroll down, these are the indicators or the quantifiable ways that we're going to get there. These are what we need to figure out how to collect data on these key points. And I'm going to tell you what you do with this, this impact measurement framework. But folks, you know, the Community Foundation hired us to come in and show this to you because um, this is a, it, it's a really powerful tool for you to have at your fingertips. Um, and it will, it will make your reporting and articulation and 
um, articulation of success much more powerful in the future. And hopefully, for some of you, you're able to identify indicators that you're already measuring at your organization. And for some of you, you know, it'll be the first time that you've had to report out on your outcomes and indicators. And for those of you scratching your head and saying, wow, this is going to be a, a key item that's required for our community foundation application and also like all of our funders and donors suddenly want to know what our outcomes are and we've had no idea where to even begin, hopefully this will serve as a marvelous pool and resource for you moving forward. Okay, what I'd like to do, um, because I, I just want to make sure that we are really um, getting it here, is I, I'm not going to go through the whole process again, but I do want to just show you one more example. So for those of you in um, a totally different line of work here, and this, this could pertain to several different types of programs, but what, what we entered here as a mission or impact statement is healthy children and families, right? Now that, that is probably a key goal of the Community Foundation. It's also a key goal of many of you, whether you're in health services, human services, even those of you doing environmental programs, et cetera. Um, it may be also, depending how you interpret it, um, religious programs, right? So the spiritual health of children and families may be your impact statement. So we use this because it can pertain to so many different types of programs. So that would be the impact statement that you would enter on that first screen. And then when you go through the whole process, um, these outcomes actually come out of the taxonomy. So not out of a specific program area, but out of the taxonomy. And you've identified, you know what, we need to increase knowledge, learning, attitude, skills, et cetera. We need to do that as a key outcome. We need to change behavior. So we want to reduce bad behavior, okay, whatever that means to you. So you'll have to get into a few more specifics depending on your program. And then we want to increase participant health, right? So we've chosen these indicators that we think are solid ways to measure toward those outcomes. And this then serves as our impact framework. Now what I, I do want to say is I will be leading another webinar in February that has a much more heavy um, focus on the indicator piece and data collection and, okay, we've identified this impact measurement framework, but how in the world do we implement it? Right? How do we collect the data? So we'll be focusing on that next month. Um, your goal at this point is to make sure that you're identifying the right outcomes and indicators. Okay. Now I'm going to get back into my PowerPoint presentation. Um, I just want to pause for another quick moment. So let me just, um, I'm going to lower everyone's hands. I'm going to ask you for a quick moment. Show me, um, show of hands if this makes sense you feel like you know how to get to this tool, you feel like this may be um, a useful tool for you, but what I'd like to know with your show of hands is, are you following me? Does this make sense so far? If it does, please click on your hand icon. Okay, most of you have raised their hand. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. So Maria just sent in a comment saying this is really great. Okay. There are several of you who haven't raised your hands. I'm, I'm hoping it's just because you're doing something else. Um, hopefully you're not surfing your email but doing something else. Okay. And again, the website, I'll go through this over and over again. Um, the way to access this is through whatworks.org. So it's that simple. What you're trying to do through this whole process is figure out what works, go to whatworks.org, access our tools, and go to the Outcomes Browser or the Impact Framework tool. Okay? All right. A um, couple of other questions have come in, and I'm, I'm going to wait until the end to answer them because I think I might answer them through the rest of the PowerPoint now. So let's move back into the PowerPoint. 
we've introduced the outcomes portal. Now let's talk a little bit more about identifying indicators. Okay. Now what we've done through the outcomes portal is we've actually identified these indicators for you, but we don't want to take away the part of the process that has to do with you really understanding why certain indicators have been identified. And if you have further indicators beyond our framework, right, that you think are really key to your outcomes and key to your program, I want to make sure that you have the tools necessary to identify those on your own. So an indicator is simply a quantifiable way to measure success towards your outcomes. Okay, it's got to be quantifiable. And the only way to make it quantifiable is if it's a number of something, a percent of something, or perhaps an amount of money. Okay? But it's typically going to be a number and or a percent. So it looks something like this, the indicator. It's a number of positive media reviews or awards. Right? That's going to be really important for, for some of your programs. Okay? Perhaps it looks like the percent of participants reporting satisfaction. Again, a critical measure. Um, many of your programs, regardless of whether you're in arts and culture, you know, human services, environment, um, education, et cetera, you're going to want to look at satisfaction. Now, for those of you serving animals, that's going to be a little bit more challenging to get at, but um, there, are, there are definitely other ways to measure. Okay. So let's move on from here. What else marks an important criteria for setting indicators? You want to make sure before you go any further in identifying your outcomes and your indicators that everything ties back to mission. And by mission here, I mean the mission of your organization, the stated mission that's on all your brochures, it's on your website, it's you know ingrained in everyone's mind. Everything that you identify has to tie back to mission. And if it doesn't, one of two things is happening. Either you need to go back to strategic planning and revisit what your mission is. And this happens sometimes. You know, The economic environment has changed. Perhaps you've had a big turnaround in your executive staff or your board. And maybe it is time to rethink your mission. The other thing that happens is you start to identify outcomes that just sound really exciting and great. But when you look back at the mission, you, you kind of have to say, well, if we achieve this outcome, it doesn't really get us any closer to our mission. So then you need to revisit what those key outcomes are. Okay. Now we want to think about the indicators as SMART. Okay. This is not an acronym that I came up with, but I think it's, it's brilliant. And it, it really makes explaining this much more clear. You want to make sure that your indicators, so again, the indicators are the number, the percent of something. You've got to make sure that they're specific. So what we're going to end up with here is a one-page impact measurement framework. That one page has to be very specific. It's got to provide clear direction on the action that needs to be taken easy to understand. And what that means is, too, if this piece of paper, um, this impact measurement framework, were to go floating into the office next door to your nonprofit, and someone picked it up and tried to read it, they should understand basically what it is that you're trying to say without needing a dictionary or a three-hour course in what service you provide. Okay, so keep it simple, keep it specific. Secondly, measurable. It's got to be quantifiable through measurement. So again, having it as a number or a percent should get you there. The last three are a little bit more challenging, so we'll spend a little bit more time on them. Attainable means it's realistic, given your organizational capabilities. This is huge. So for many of you, you'll start to develop this framework, and you'll choose outcomes and indicators that sound so great, you are really excited. And then you go back to the reality and you go, oops, but I only have one part-time staff person. How in the world am I going to collect data on all of these things? Or how in the world am I going to actually implement this framework when I just don't have, I don't have the time, I don't have the, the expertise, et cetera? So 
attainable and making sure that it's just grounded in reality for your program is really important. Now, what that may mean when you're looking through the outcomes browser is to say, okay, maybe you've identified outcomes that sound really great, but you won't be able to measure toward them for another year or two because you're, you're on an upward trajectory or you're expanding your scale, et cetera. That's okay. You can identify um, outcomes, and the ones that you will be measuring actively are the ones that you'll report to the community foundation. Other ones you may be experimenting with, and those can stay internal for your organization. Results-oriented. You want to make sure that everything's focused on the outcome, not the method by which you get there. This is so important, and I'll emphasize it over and over and over again, and some of you will still fall into this trap. Many of us through our nonprofit work are focused day in, day out, day in, day out on the activities that we do for our target group, right, for our clients, for our customers, um, for the people that we serve. And we're so focused on the activities that we don't often take that step back and say, okay, but what's the result that we're trying to get at? So let me give you an example here. If you're an advocacy organization or you have advocacy um, activities as part of what you do, you might say, you know what, we're going to have an indicator as the number of flyers that we hand out to explain to people you know, a new solution to a problem, let's say. And we go to a bunch of big rallies and we hand out 10,000 flyers. And we think that that's pretty solid. So we want to be able to report, you know, the number of flyers that we distributed, 10,000. And then we say, oops, we were focused on the method, not the outcome. The outcome is how many of those 10,000 people actually read the flyer? How many of those 10,000 people did what it said to do on the flyer? So perhaps the action item on the flyer was visit our website and sign up for a free consult. So the outcome then becomes not how many flyers we distributed, but how many people did in action based on that. Okay? Finally, time bound. You want to make sure that each of your indicators is set around a time frame that's reasonable. So you saw in some of the examples that I showed, you know, within 12 months, you know, every three months, every month. This is totally dependent on your program and on how you run your program and how often data is available. So for some of you, um, you're going to have weekly indicators that you need to collect um, data based on. For others of you, it may be monthly. Others of you, it's going to be quarterly. Others of you, especially when you look at services like health, um, health and environment, et cetera, there may be things that you're only measuring annually, or maybe it's something you're measuring every other year, okay? But you want to make sure that every indicator has a certain reasonable time-bound quality to it. Okay, moving on from here. The whole goal in this is that we want to move beyond numbers served, right? We, we have to get beyond those outputs and focus on outcomes. So I have here for you some, some more examples of what outcomes look like. Again, you will, have an ex, you will have access to this slide deck, so you'll be able to review this in detail. Now the key here, and this is from a, a resource that I'm a huge fan of, um, Jim Collins is a famous author, wrote a New York Times best-selling book called Good to Great, and then he adapted it for our sector, for the nonprofit sector, through a monograph called Good to Great in the Social Sectors. It's a wonderful book. It's less than $10 on Amazon. Um, and he said here, what matters is not finding the perfect indicator, but settling upon a consistent and intelligent method of assessing results and then tracking your trajectory with rigor. This goes back to my introduction. You, we really want to make sure that what we're achieving for our target group goes beyond anecdotal evidence and that we actually have a consistent process where we're able to see trends about what it is that we're accomplishing. Now, 
implementing this type of outcome measurement or benchmarking process, this is big, right? This, is, this um, represents change for many of us. And it's a, it's a strategic change, and it is not easy or simple. So what I don't want to do is oversimplify this. But I do want to, and hopefully through the tools and resources that, that we are providing to you, um, hopefully we're, we're simplifying it to the extent possible. Okay. Implementing strategy requires change. Okay. And he said here, I'm not going to read this quote to you, I'm only going to make the point that in order to implement this as a systematic process, there has to be a core pilot group. There has to be a group of people that are going to be dedicated to doing this. And hopefully you um, listening to this webinar are part of that core pilot group. If you're not, I'm going to really recommend that, especially once this webinar is recorded, that you share it with the key people in your organization that can really make this happen. Okay? There are four key points of what needs to happen. The people need to be um, or I'm sorry, the initiatives need to be connected with real work goals and processes. Okay? This shouldn't be something in addition to your business process. It should end up being baked in. It needs to be connected with improving performance. That's the whole goal. It has to involve people, and I mentioned this, who have the power to take action regarding these goals. And then finally, you know, we are so wrapped up and busy with our activities, but we want to balance action and reflection. We want to connect inquiry and experimentation. And I'll just emphasize from there that the framework that you identify and the first time that you do this, it may not be perfect. And you know what? Perfection is overrated. Um, we really want to make sure that you're starting somewhere. And by starting using our frameworks, at least you're starting with a solid set of researched outcomes and indicators. So you're already a huge step um, ahead of the curve. Okay. Now, there are some limitations, and we're going to focus on this more in, in our February webinar. But I will just emphasize here that once you've implemented this framework and you're collecting data, okay, you will absolutely see the numbers. You'll start to see the trends. Certain targets that you set will be missed. Certain targets will be exceeded. You know, you'll celebrate certain things that you're achieving. You'll be upset at certain things that you thought you were achieving and you're actually not achieving according to the data. So a major purpose of all of this is to raise questions, but it seldom, if ever, provides answers by itself as to what should be done. And what that means is communication is the key to success. Okay? There has to be a process for measuring your outcomes, for collecting data, for reporting and monitoring that data. But there has to be a communication process absolutely side by side with your performance measurement process to say, why is something happening? Why is our program attendance trending downward when we feel like we're doing so much more work? You know, why are we suddenly exceeding all of our goals? What happened? And how do we, how do we understand what happened so we can replicate it? Okay? This is all to move toward continuous improvement, which is what we really want. Okay? And the key to do that is this quote, nonprofits' idea of strategy must shift from what the organization plans to do to what it intends to accomplish, especially outcomes that can be measured and for which the organization will be accountable. So getting beyond activities and moving toward results. Next steps. Okay? You want to really think about this framework that we've identified. You want to go through the website, develop your impact measurement framework, and then share it. So discuss impact. Discuss your impact statement and the key outcomes as a senior team. Perhaps you'll want to discuss it with your board. Okay? You'll want to share conclusions with other stakeholders. Right? Maybe you want to even share it with some clients to say, this is how we are identifying success. These are the key results or the key outcomes that we're trying to achieve. Does that sound right to you? Right? 
then you want to make, you want to collect all that feedback and make any changes to gain widespread acceptance. And last step, and actually throughout, make sure everything you come up with links back to your mission. All right. As I mentioned, there is another webinar that we're going to be doing um, at the middle of February, and you'll receive more notice about that once we've solidified the date and time. Prior to February, homework. Go through the details of what the homework is. I just want to say it's a great opportunity to be prepared to fill out the, the Community Foundation's application to really spend time doing this um, with me you know, in February, but really before you get there. Um, so the next round of applications you know, may be due as soon as March. So you want to make sure that, that you're, you're prepared. Okay, so you're going to start by reviewing the outcome portal tools, and I've got the website here. You will receive the website again. You want to be able to find the relevant outcomes and indicators for your program using the outcomes framework browser. So that was that first tool that I showed you. Once you've decided, okay, we think we're going to use a program specific area, maybe you want to use outcomes that are in the taxonomy, you're then going to switch over to the impact measurement generator and develop a shared framework for your programs. That shared framework is that one page that you can print out. Okay? And you're going to discuss that one page with your senior staff, again, I mentioned, perhaps with your board or any other key stakeholders. Now, within those key stakeholders, please make sure that you gain buy-in from your line staff. Because your line staff, if, if you're large enough to have you know, all these different staff levels, your line staff are the people that are going to be actually collecting the data. So you want to make absolutely sure that they have bought in to, to this process. OK, what are we going to do in February? Um, again, this is only a month away. So in February, we are going to be introducing data collection methods. These data collection methods will not make sense to you if you haven't done the February homework. So please identify your indicators, your outcomes and your indicators as much as you can in the next month. Okay? We'll be going through data collection methods. We'll be discussing setting and managing towards certain targets. We're going to explore what a communication plan looks like. We'll discuss the new requirements for the March Community Foundation deadline. And then bigger than that, we're going to envision a cultural shift. So if we implement all these things, instead of having the whole purpose, um, no offense, Community Foundation, but instead of having the whole purpose just be, just being to fill out the grant application, the Community Foundation has a great interest in you actually building your capacity to do this well. So you want to envision a cultural shift at your organization, and that really is tied to buy-in. So the, the number of people you can convince to watch this webinar, the number of people you can convince that the framework that you've identified um, really represents success for your organization, the better. OK, we're, we're going to talk about tracking data, looking at trends, and um, to a very small extent, because we, we just won't have time. But we're going to start to get at analyzing, or at least approaching, how would you analyze what works and change what doesn't work. Okay, Some future goals to this work, Okay, and future benefits of this work. A positive cultural shift towards systematic benefits to a target group. That's huge, right? We're all in this line of work because we want to help people. We want to change people's lives for the better. So if we can know that we're doing it systematically and not just anecdotally, how wonderful is that? We want to measure our performance to have better preparation for challenges and opportunities to thrive. Right? We are in an economic recession right now. This is an enormous challenge. And part of what outcome measurement can do for you is allow you to prioritize which programs, which results are key to our success and key to the success of our target clients, right? And those that aren't absolutely key, we may decide should not be our focus. 
Okay, so this whole process will help you increase your focus. It may improve your resource allocation. So once you've identified the key results that you're trying to achieve, you may say, you know what, we have to get at this outcome. To get at this outcome, we have to put a certain number of indicators in place and we need more money to do that. So we have to shift our budget toward, toward different places. And I'm just wrapping up here, folks. I'm at the end. We're going to increase our use of data. We'll, we'll increase the, our ability to analyze, again, what worked, and also to change what didn't work, improve programs, and finally, through going through all this, we should improve our success at raising more funds to continue our work. That's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for attending. You're going to receive a quick evaluation before you log out. I'm going to ask that you fill it out um, immediately. You will receive a reminder email tomorrow with a link to the evaluation. But please, folks, um, we need to know, and the Community Foundation wants to know, what made sense to you today, what you still have questions about. Help us prepare for February. Um, secondly, you'll want to visit our website for further information. Um, there are a lot of free resources, tools, um, information on our website. And you can contact me with questions prior to February's webinar. And you have my website, or my, my web address, rather. I'm now going to stop recording.